This is Jenkins Falls. Good morning. So here we are, another hot, steamy, did I say hot and steamy already? Hot and steamy morning with gnats flying everywhere in Northwest Florida. So today, I know that it seems like cotton picking season is an eternity away. It's almost July. We'll be picking cotton the end of September and we have to work on our equipment when we can. So cotton pickers, sh chase, for the people that don't know what a cotton picker looks like, show them the cotton picker. It's a John Deere 7760. This particular uh, type of machine, it picks the cotton up front, blows it in the back, it makes something that looks like a hay bale for people that know what a round hay bale looks like, wraps it in plastic and spits it out the back. When cotton season gets here, we'll go in depth with all that. But today I got Jonathan Scott with me. His brother Gary's walking around here checking things out. The best people in the Southeast, period, to work on your cotton picker. The other neat thing about the Scott brothers, they have Scott's Picker Repair, I think is what it's called anyway. And then they build barns when they're not either picking cotton or working on cotton pickers during the winter time, they build barns. So all of our barns here over the years, the Scott brothers have erected. So just proud to be able to call them friends. They're really good people. So this morning, the cotton picker, the heads on a cotton picker, require about as much maintenance as a helicopter does. They're real tight tolerances. There's a lot turning, a lot going on. I'm gonna show you basically how it works without having any cotton to pick and show you what Jonathan and them will be doing. Um, all this is maintenance that's, some of the maintenance that we're gonna to do today, you know, happens every two to five years, depending on how you do it. Some of it happens every year and I'll show you some maintenance that we've already done before they got here. They won't have to be doing so. Come over here, Chase. Let's show them what the heads look like. So this this here is where the row of cotton would go. Cotton will come through here, and you see all these little things here. All these are called spindles. And you can come over here, Chase, and get them a little bit better. So here's how it works. These spindles, if you look, come up here and see. Can they see this? Have little, I guess, barbs on them. Is what I would call them. They're extremely sharp, like they'll, they'll cut your daggum finger in a million places. But these spindles are turning, they're rotating like this. They're spinning like a drill. The whole bar is spinning in this fashion. So it's spinning, it's going through there as the cotton comes by. These sharp barbs are they're spinning like a drill, they catch the cotton. So then it's stuck onto here, it comes out of the plant, it leaves the plant in the ground and all the stuff that goes with it, leaves it on the stalk and in the ground, just the cotton stuck on the barb. Then they come around here to the dolfer. Come around here, Chase. See if you can get some of So these dolphers are spinning, they're spinning a lot faster than what the spindle is spinning, if that makes sense. So the, it, the, spindle hits right underneath. They're supposed to be the distance of a dollar bill, the thickness of a dollar bill gap between the spindle and the dolfer. So the dolfer hits it super fast and basically unwinds the cotton off of it. It unscrews the cotton off of the spindle. Then it'll fall down, get sucked up in the chute, blow up into the accumulator, and then back into the module builder part of the machine. Then the spindle comes back around here. And these are moisture pads. So they have little holes in them. And uh, so basically, soapy water is being fed into the moisture pads. So they kind of gently wipe the spindle, put just a little bit of soapy slick residue on there so that the cotton will slide off of it easy. And then it's back around to picking cotton again. In a minute, I'll crank it up and show you what's what's being done, how it actually looks when it's moving. But these things are moving speed of light. They're super fast. You can barely see them moving. They're going so fast. So, the yearly maintenance on these things, you always have to check the spindles are self 
these barbs will eventually wear out and they'll get where they're not sharp anymore. They'll kind of get slick, especially the ones on the bottom because it's where the thicker part of the plant is, the, the harder stem, I guess, root, whatever, not root. What am I trying to say? Stalk. Stalk. Thank you, Jonathan. I knew I was going to get something out of you. That's where the bigger part of the stalk is, so it's rubbing against it constantly. There's more dirt and stuff where it splashed up when it was raining and that cotton, so it, all of it together eventually wears the barbs off the spindle. So you'll have to change the spindles out. And I don't remember the exact number. I could do the figuring real quick, but basically how we typically do things here is there's 20. We'll change the, we'll take the, uh, bottom 10, throw them away, move the top 10 down to the bottom because they're still relatively sharp, and then we'll put the new 10 at the top. So it takes roughly a thousand spindles to do that. But the thing to think about too is, for this drum here, there's another drum behind it. So there's a total of 12 drums on the picker. So if you had to change all the spindles out, it'd take a little less than 4,000 spindles. So, that is one of the wear parts. Another thing that I forgot to mention to you, these things, behind each one of these spindles is a rod that has gears and bearings on it. So these, every morning, these uh, bars are hollow. So we fill them up with grease. There's an onboard greasing system here. We go through a lot of grease a year. But these, these uh, shafts get greased daily. And after, I think it's six hours, there's an alarm goes off and it wants you to grease it again. So a lot of grease required. This thing, you would think picking cotton would be clean, but a cotton picker turns out to be one of the greasiest, nastiest pieces of machinery on the farm. So that's part of the wear stuff on the spindles. The next thing is these, you know what they're made out of? Not plastic, Poly not polyurethane. polyurethane. So they're made out of polyurethane and eventually they'll get brittle and break off and wear out and that's one of the things that we're going to be doing today in addition to that while they have the uh, moisture columns out they'll put them in a jig and straighten them and make sure everything's good because what will happen is you'll get a big weed or something get stuck in there and it'll bend that particular pad up and then that spindle that that pad washes off every time will start wrapping so they'll they'll put them in a jig make sure everything's like it's supposed to be the Dolphur columns, which they get a lot of, they get attention every year, sometimes twice a year, depending on how well your machine's set and the amount of cotton that goes through it. So if you come around here and look at these, come around here, Chase. Can you show them? Come on around so they can actually see the, if you look, can you see how these, the front of these are rounded off? That's bad. We want them, like if you look at the back end and see how it's more square where it hits, that's how you want them. So they're gonna take these out. They're made out of what, Jonathan? Polyurethane. Polyurethane. I like that. Everything's made out of polyurethane. They're made out of polyurethane. So what he'll do, we'll take these columns out. Him and Gary will take these columns out. We do it too when we have to, but we like them to do it because they're much faster at it than we are. They'll take these out, they'll put them in a machine that grinds the edge off. And see, all these have to be exactly the same distance apart because the spindles are the exact same distance apart. So everything, like I say, has very tight tolerances. So they'll grind these off, we'll replace. Typically what happens, the, the front heads pick how much? 70%? 65% of the cotton's picked 60, in the front. 65% of the cotton's picked with all these spindles on the front drum. The back basically cleans up what the front misses. So what we'll do, we want all of our best stuff, all of our newest stuff on the front of the machine. And all of our older stuff we'll squeeze another year or so out of on the back of the machine where it's not having to work as hard. So those are the main things, the main wear items, if you will. And then every, how often do you like to shim the bars? Depending on how many acres of cotton you pick, we've got to where now we're starting to do it on a six row machine that's picking probably 12, 1500 acres of cotton. We're doing it about every two, three years. So like this machine here is going to pick, like he said, between 12 and 1500 acres a year. 
So he's saying every two or three years they'll shim these. And that's because the, uh, the what do you call the thing that sits on down there? The pivot pad. The pivot pad starts to wear a little bit. And these bars, you know, well, you can't see these. They're pretty good. They'll wear differently. So what they'll do is they'll take and put a micro, uh, micrometer on there. Is that what you Dial indicator. Dial indicator. They'll put the dial indicator on there, swing it by, see what it said, and they'll do that for all the bars. How many bars are on a drum on these pickers? 16 in the front, 12 in the back. 16 bars on the front, 12 in the back. And they'll shim up, they put these little shims underneath the bottom because if this bar is worn out and it's sitting lower than the rest of them, when it comes by the doffer back here, none of that cotton's gonna get unscrewed. None of it's gonna get doffed off of the spindle. So they'll, they use these little shims and to what, how close to tolerance are y'all using? Three to five thousandths. Three to five thousandths. So y'all think about that. Three to five thousandths of an inch. And they use these, and you can see they're, they're paper thin. But then every bar will be set in the exact same height. So when it comes by the doffer, it'll get cleaned off good. The worst thing that can happen and how you lose a lot of cotton is to have spindles that are wrapped or dirty and don't catch the cotton as it goes by the plant. If it can't catch it on these little barbs, it can't pick the cotton. It ends up on the ground or left on the plant and that's money out of our pocket. These, these machines are extremely expensive to buy, they're extremely expensive to operate, and they're extremely expensive to maintain. So we want all of our stuff in tip-top shape while it's going through the field. It got, with cotton being at probably gonna be around 60 cent a pound at harvest time, we've got to have every little stitch of it that we can get. We don't want any left in the field. So that's a crash course in Basically how a cotton picker works, we're gonna crank it up, let you see it running in slow motion, and uh, so you can kind of get a feel for what we're talking about. And then we'll show you a little bit of video of Jonathan and Gary removing the stuff from the picker. And then they'll take, they'll take the doffer columns and the moisture columns to their shop, go through everything, fix everything it needs, replace everything it needs replacing, and come back and put it on. And other than just uh, changing oil and filters and greasing, and the normal type maintenance, this machine will be ready for the fall. So typically what happens is we're picking peanuts and then all of a sudden, in years past, it's been the exact day you finish picking peanuts, you start picking cotton that's sitting there waiting on you. Hopefully having this machine this year uh, where it doesn't take so many people and tractors to, to perform the operation, just one guy can go do this. Hopefully we'll be picking peanuts and cotton at the same time this year and get our crops out in a more timely manner. Anyway, we'll fire it off, show you what it does, and then we'll show show you what uh, Jonathan and Gary have to go through to remove the, the pieces of, of stuff off the picker. See you in a second. All right, so here we are, and you can see now that, of course, they're moving at a very slow rate, but you can see see the spindle spinning like a drill and you can see the drum going by so you can just imagine the cotton coming in here it getting picked off and go show them what it looks like around on the back side of the dolphin of course we've got everything opened up it looks a lot different when it's closed but you can see the spindles are hitting just underneath the dolphin then they would come around here to the moisture column and you can come here and see that chase so there, there'll be moisture, there'll be soapy water flowing into here, wiping, gently wiping the spindle, and it, it'll be clean and coming around for another hit at the top. So here we are. We have to run it and look for dead spindles. Sometimes these spindles inside the bar, like I'll show you a bad bar in just a minute, there'll be one coming around and they painted it black right here and you can see about half the spindles aren't turning. So like I said inside there is a drive shaft that drives all those spindles. And this is kind of what this is a new spindle and what it looks like. So there's a little drive shaft in there that drives these gears. And like I said, the whole thing has grease in it. So you look in here in this bush and there's little half holes. That allows grease to be pushed in there and grease the inside of that so when it turns doesn't wear out so fast. So there's roll pins, there's bearings, there's gears. 
sometimes the shaft will break. There's all kind of reasons, but like I say, so far out of the front, roughly thousand, we have only found two problems. And both of them I already knew about, so. Usually we'll just keep picking unless there's a lot wrong with one particular drum. And then we'll fix it this time of the year and get ready for the next year. Here's Gary hard at work. Just taking the bearing cups off the bottom of the dolphin columns. The big bearing down there, it gets we grease it regularly. And that's what uh, that's what the dolphin column spins on. If they go out, it's bad news because you don't want any kind of spark on a cotton picker. Sparks make fire. When those go out, sometimes they cause spark, spark to get blown up into the basket or the simulator, and you'll be on fire. Cotton is extremely flammable. So he's gonna take this off, then up at the top, there's three bolts to undo there, and then he'll bring the column out and I'll show it to you. All right, so here's what the dolphin column looks like when it's out of the machine. And down here is the dolphin bearing that it spins on. And so I always get them to change the dolphin bearings anytime they have it taken apart. It's just cheap insurance. So I'll take and I'll put it in a grinder and I'll grind the edges. You can see up here how it's kind of rounded off. So what we'll do is he'll grind this column, get it nice and neat and then we'll put it in the back and then we'll restack a column with brand new dolphers and put them in the front. All right, so now we got one of the moisture columns off. You can see what they look like. These, what are these things made out of, Jonathan? Polyurethane. Polyurethane. Made out of polyurethane. There's all kind of little holes in between those fins. Water will come in the top. There's a tube going to each one of them. And then it just kind of oozes out of these fins onto the onto the spindle and wipes the spindle. So now you know what all they're gonna be doing. They gotta do that 12 times and then replace everything that needs replacing. They've already checked for the dead spindles. There's very few of them, so they've only got a couple of bars they gotta work on. And uh, what's today, Wednesday? Probably Friday or Monday, they'll come back, put everything back together. And other than just normal engine maintenance, changing oil and greasing it and stuff like that, it'll be ready to go. See you soon. Please be sure to like our videos and subscribe to our channel.